you doing? I'm waiting for it to get dark so I can see the stars. You don't have to wait. There's a star right there. Where? Up there. The sun's a star. That's right. The sun is a star. It's a medium-sized dwarf star. There are about 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Our sun is roughly halfway between the center and the edge of the Milky Way. The sun formed about 4.5 billion years ago from a huge cloud of gas, dust, and ice called a nebula. The cloud's gravity was so strong it started swirling and being pulled inward. And as it collapsed, the center got very hot and material there formed the sun. Other clumps of material formed the planets, moons, asteroids, comets, the things we call our solar system. The sun's strong gravity holds all those things in an orbit with the sun at the very center and everything else revolving around it. Here, hold these. The sun is really big. If the sun were this beach ball, Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system, would be the size of this ping pong ball. And Earth would be the size of this pea. The sun is made up of hot gases such as hydrogen and helium. In the core, the gases are tightly squeezed together by the sun's gravity. The core's temperature is about 28 million degrees Fahrenheit. With all that heat and pressure, the hydrogen atoms are fused into helium, releasing energy. That change is called nuclear fusion, and it lets off a lot of heat and light. That energy is transferred outward to the surface of the sun, or the photosphere. This layer is about 300 miles thick and has a temperature of about 99,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes we can see dark patches on this layer of the sun. They're called sunspots. In close-up pictures, the photosphere looks like it's moving and boiling, but we on Earth experience all that energy as sunshine. The next layer is the chromosphere. It's about 1,200 miles thick and is made up of hydrogen gas. We can sometimes see violent eruptions exploding into the chromosphere. The sun's outside layer is called the corona. Its temperature is over 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. The wispy material in the corona spreads out into space millions of miles. Wow, that's cool. Achoo! Whoa, you may have a photic sneeze reflex. About 10 to 35% of all people sneeze when they look at the sun. By the way, you should never look directly at the sun. You can damage your eyes. If you're going to study the sun, you should use something like these glasses with filters. Ah, uh, that's better. So, what does the sun do? Light from the sun takes about eight minutes to get to Earth. That light and heat warms our atmosphere and gives us weather. The Earth rotating around the sun gives us our seasons. And the Earth's heat turns some of that water on Earth into vapor, which rises into the air, cools, and falls as rain or snow. We call that the water cycle, and we need that precipitation to live. Plants use the sun's rays to turn water and a gas called carbon dioxide into food and give off oxygen we need to breathe. We humans also turn the sun's power into electricity using solar panels. So without the sun, there would be no life on Earth. So the sun is all good, right? Well, storms on the sun, solar flares, and solar wind all send electrically charged particles toward the Earth. Those particles hit the Earth's magnetic field, causing it to bend and shake. Those particles can cause problems for satellites that orbit the Earth and disrupt radio and television signals. They can also knock out power. And if we spend too much time in the sun, we can get a sunburn. Sunscreen protects our skin like these filters protect our eyes. So is there anything else I should know about the sun? Yeah, it'll eventually burn out. Oh, wait, what? That's right. The sun shines for a long time, but not forever. Our sun is middle-aged. It has enough hydrogen in its core to last for another five billion years or so. After that, it will expand outward like a big balloon and become a giant red star. Eventually, it will grow larger than the whole solar system. It will end its life first as a tiny white dwarf star, then as a cold, dark object that doesn't give off any more light. But that's not gonna happen for billions of years, so we don't have to worry about it. Phew. I say we get something cold to drink, put on more sunscreen, and enjoy the starlight. I mean, sunshine. Good idea. You don't have to wait. There's a star right nope. there. Okay. Do I have a line? Uh -uh. No. No. For you.
<laughs> Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Idaho National Laboratory, mentoring talent and finding solutions for energy and security challenges. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.